By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a really sweet old school magic battle because I'm playing against Yoop's Alpha 60 Giant deck. It's red and green, it's super flavorful, and I'm bringing to the table a red candle flare deck with a strong dragon theme. So it's also pretty cool if I say so myself. Now before I jump into the deck decks, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that uh, if you want to skip this, I know some of you want to go straight to the games. Uh, the easiest way to do this is by checking the timestamps in the description below. So go there and look for the timestamp MTG Games and then you can go straight to the action. And in the description, you can also find more information about the rule set of this video. And for now, I'm going to start with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, Joop, and his red green alpha giant deck. And here we see the alpha giants deck of my opponent, Joop. And uh, it, it's just a beautiful deck. It's a deck that makes me jealous. I, uh, I don't own a lot of alpha cards, but alpha, I mean, it all started with alpha. And it's really cool to see these decks because for me, that's kind of the embodiment of, of what magic actually is, the essence of of that first year of magic. Now, um, when we look at this deck, it's really that red-green aggro, right? But there are a couple of cool cards and tricks in here that I want to highlight. Uh, the first card that I want to talk about is Two-Headed Giant of Fouries. Such a cool card. One red, one four. Uh, after Unlimited, it hasn't been reprinted. It is a 4-4 four, four Trampler that reads, Two-Headed Giant of Fouries can block an additional creature each combat, which I think is super flavorful because it's got two heads, you know, it can block two creatures. And actually, I think every giant in the game of Magic should have trampled because a giant literally walks over you. It's gigantic, right? I mean, yes, elephants should have trampled too. Giants? I think so. But, you know, that's that's my opinion. Let me know in the comments below if you agree. Now, um, like I said, there are some other tricks in here. And the really cool trick here is the combination of Orcish Oriflame and Dwarven Warrior. So if you attack... Uh, with the creature, Orcish Oriflame gives that attacking creature plus one, plus oh. Now with Dwarven Warriors, Warriors, it's a 1-1 one, one creature you can tap, and you can make target creature with power two or less unblockable. So for example, I can make my Cockatrice unblockable because it's a 2-4 flyer. Then I attack with it. After making it unblockable, I can pump it. So it can get the bonus from the Orcish Oriflame, making it a 3-4. It is still unblockable, and then it's going to deal three damage. You can even then put a Giant Grove on it, dealing six damage, right? So after you've made it unblockable with the Dwarven uh, Warrior, you can still pump it up. And of course, this works exceptionally well with Dragon Whelp. Now, there's only one Dragon Whelp in this deck, but I think it's just because my opponent only has one Alpha Dragon Whelp. Well, I have zero, so I'm super jealous of that one Alpha Dragon Whelp. But I'm sure if he would have had more, he probably would have put two or maybe even three of these Dragon Whelps in there because they go so well with the Dwarven Warriors unblockable plan. Um, there's also a lot of burn in this deck. You know, you may think that, you know, I've got the advantage in this matchup because I'm playing with a deck that isn't only alpha, so I've got more choices. But, I mean, looking at this, this is a dangerous deck. If he can have, like, a Llanowar Elves turn one and he can kind of ramp up and get his creatures out early, dealing combat damage, and then he can finish it off with burn, burn he can... He can win this, you know. Um, anyway, this is the deck of my opponent, Joop. Let's take a look at uh, what I'm bringing to the table today, my Candle Flare deck. And here we see my deck of today. So it's Candle Flare with a lot of dragons. Now, Candle Flare uh, is, is all about two cards, Candelabra of Taunus and Mana Flare. So uh, Mana Flare is an enchantment from red, one red and two to cast that reads, whenever you tap a land, it produces one extra mana of the mana it would produce. So for example, if I tap a red mana, I don't get one red, no, uh, a red land, I don't get one red, I get two red instead. So it doubles the amount of mana. Candelabra of Tanis is this uh, artifact from Antiquities, uh, a mono artifact, tap, pay X, untap X amount of lands. So what you can do is, if all your lands tap for double amounts of mana, I can say I'm gonna tap all my 10 lands, for example, get 20 mana, uh, because of the mana flare, then I can use 10 of those mana, put that into my Candelabra of Tannis, untap all my lands again, so I still have 10 mana left, tap all my lands again, and I have 30 mana. So, you know, Candelabra of Tannis and mana flare is kind of this mana engine. And then the question is, what are you going to do with all that mana? Well, the obvious option is just play a huge burn spell and kill your opponent. So that's, that is part of this deck. You know, uh, I'm playing two fireballs, two disintegrates, but... I wanted it to do more than just make a huge burn spell. So I thought, what's really cool to do? And then I figured out, okay, just drop a huge Shivan, 
attack with the Shivan, make huge flames. And of course, the baby Shivan, uh, dragon whelps, I put those together. Then I thought, hmm, maybe I also want to have dragon engines in here. Dragon engine is a pretty bad card, I'm going to be honest with you. It's three to cast for a 1-3 creature from Antiquities. You can pay two to give it plus one plus oh. Um, which I think is, is is bad, but when you've got a lot of mana, like with these Candle Flare decks, maybe it's not that bad. So my dream is to kind of attack with uh, with one of these Dragon Engines and just deal a lot of damage. That's one of the goals that I have for this match. Now, um, I did tweak the deck a little bit. I made some differences. Uh, one of the cards I added to the deck is a Dwarven Warrior. We saw the deck, uh, deck card also in the Alpha deck of my opponent, Yoop. And of course, I want to use that uh, card to make my Dragon Whelps unblockable, but also to make my Dragon Engine unblockable. And, you know, try to just have a huge swing with the Dragon Engine. That's kind of the dream. I believe I've also added Rock Hydras in here. So I'm not quite sure what I took out, but, you know, the core of the deck is still the same. It's Candle Flare, Mana Flare with lots of Dragons. But I added some Dwarven Warriors and some... Uh, rock hydras in there so we'll just have to wait and see you know for the video itself like what kind of cards are going to show up in my deck because honestly i forgot so it's going to be a surprise for me too anyway we looked at my deck we discussed what it wants to do we looked at the deck of my opponent now let's go to the match game number one here we go my opponent Yoop on the play starting with a lunderer elves and then the past turn do i have a bolt that's the question because then i can bolt the elf i guess i don't just a pass here and a mountain by Yoop. And an attack going to put me on 19. So first blood is drawn by my opponent. I'm tapping two red here. What am I going to do? Perhaps a disintegrate or... Okay, fireball. That works as well. Fireball on the Lanawer. Lanawer is gone. And a pass. There is a forest. And also a pass. So no dwarven warriors or anything. I'm tapping three. Okay, I am playing one. So the 1-1 one, one creature tapped to make target creature of power 2 and less unblockable. You here playing a giant spider. 2-4 creature that can block creatures with flying. Tapping 3. Okay, there's a dragon engine. That's pretty good because it's a 1-3 creature. So it can block the giant spider. So that's at least going to save me 2 points of damage. And of course I can use my dwarven warrior to make my dragon engine unblockable. Ooh, a cockatrice. On the side of Yoop, that's a pretty good creature. 2-4, kind of a flying thicket basilisk. Everything it uh, blocks or gets blocked by dies. So uh, it's, it's pretty tough to deal with. But luckily for me, I can make my dragon engine unblockable. But if I do, of course, my opponent is going to attack and deal 4 points of damage to me. So I'm not sure if that's the right strategy. Tapping 4 here, are we going to see a dragon whelp? There's the dragon whelp. 2-3 flying, you can pump it with uh, 1 red plus 1 plus 0. Not attacking here with the Dragon Engine. That is interesting. I could have made my Dragon Engine unblockable and simply blocked the Giant Spider with my Whelp. I could have dealt one point of damage. Then again, there's the risk that my opponent will have a, uh, a Lightning Bolt if I block on, uh, on the Whelp. Then again, you can kill it with just a Bolt. So I think I should have just attacked. There, anyway, there's a Disintegrate here killing the Dragon Whelp. So that's a pretty good move of my opponent. And there's an Orcish Oriflame. So one of the things I didn't mention yet is that Orcish Oriflame in Alpha has a different casting cost. It's only one red and one, making it, of course, a lot better than your normal Orcish Oriflame, which is one red and three to cast. But uh, we decided beforehand, if you play your Alpha deck, then uh, we're also going to apply that Alpha casting cost. That's a little reward for playing an all Alpha deck, I guess. Playing another land on my side of the table. It would be really sweet to just play, for example, a Fireball on the Cockatrice. Looks like I'm untapping everything again. For a moment, I thought I was going to play a, a Fireball or a Disintegrate. Rearranging my lands. What can I do here? Making my Dragon Engine unblockable. Attacking here for one, I guess. I can pump it up, of course. I can pay two to give a plus one, plus oh, and I can do that as many times as I want. Choosing not to do it at all. So one damage for my opponent tapping four. There's another Dragon Whelp. That is good news. Now let's just hope that my opponent doesn't have more removal. Because with Dragon Whelp, I can make it unblockable with the Warriors and swing in for five a turn. There's a Forest. Tapping three here. There's a Dwarven Warriors of Yoop. What else can he do? 
He can, of course, attack, for example, with the Giant Spider because it's going to get the bonus from the Aura Flame. So it's going to become a 3-4. And then it's uh, not going to be a very good idea for me to block with the Whelp. That's exactly what he, do what he does. So I'm going to take 3 points of damage, drop to 13. And, uh, I mean, it's not looking ideal for me here. I'm on 13, Yoop's on 19. Remember, I'm playing against a deck with a lot of burn, so he can burn me out. So I've got to be careful. I shouldn't take too much uh, damage here. But then again, I mean, I also have a pretty aggressive deck, so I think I should attack, you know, at least with the Whelp. Four cards in hand. I can make the Whelp unblockable, deal five points of damage, and then uh, Yoop is going to drop to 14. Passing turn. I'm not really liking this line of play here. I should have, I feel like I should have attacked, even if I got, for example, a bolt in hand or something like some kind of shenanigans, I should have at least attacked with one creature. So he's going to use his uh, dwarf to make his giant spider unblockable. And then it gets the bonus of the aura flame becoming a three, four tapping two here, tapping three. Are we going to see a bolt and perhaps a fork? There's a lightning bolt. Yeah, here forking the lightning bolt, dealing six point, points of damage. I guess to the spider. I'm not I'm not really liking this line of play. I think it would have been better to kill the Cockatrice, unless I've got more burn in hand, of course, because then I can burn the Cockatrice next turn, and this kind of saves me damage. But it is a pretty expensive way to deal with the Giant Spider, because I've just lost two cards for one creature. Tapping five. Are we going to see a burn spell? Yeah, there's a Disintegrate probably on the Cockatrice here. That's pretty good news for me. So now I can just attack. I should attack with... Well, maybe not everything, but at least with the Warriors and the Whelps, so I'm going to deal three points of damage here. Keeping my Dragon Engine at bay to kind of block the Dwarven Warriors. Because remember, the Warriors gets that bonus from the Aura Flame, so it could potentially deal two points of damage. I really want to try to keep my life total healthy so he cannot play like a Fireball and win the game out of nowhere. I mean, he's got kind of quite a lot of mana right now. There is an Often Troll, pretty good creature. 2-2, two, two, one red regenerate, so he can make it unblockable with the Warriors, and then it gets the bonus of the Aura Flame, deal dealing three points of damage. That would mean I'm going to drop to 10 next turn. But I, of course, have the Dragon Whelp, so I can hit him for 5, put him on 11. Attacking here, am I going to do that? That's a big question. Pumping it twice, so I'm going to deal 4 points, going to put him on 13, oh, 12. Ooh, and here is the Orc. So this is an Orc from Antiquities. It's a 1-1. One, one, um, and you can tap it to sacrifice an artifact and then deal 2 damage to any target. Which could be decisive, you know, because we're, we're 12 against 13. There's a Llanowar Elves. And I think that Yoop's hand's empty now. So that's really good news for me. I'm expecting him to attack here with the Often Troll, putting me on 10. I wonder if he's going to make it unblockable because it's got three toughness anyway, so I'm, I'm very unlikely to block here. He's going to attack. Yeah, I'm just going to take the damage. Put me on 10. I mean, the fact that Yoop is empty-handed really helps me in kind of gambling a little bit more with my life total. You know, even if he draws like a fireball, he's got two, four, he's got eight mana, so he can hit me for seven with a fireball. Put me on three. So, it, I mean, it is risky. I'm going to untap. I don't think I can kill my uh, my opponent here in this turn. Okay, going to play a Soul Ring. Tap the Soul Ring. Candelabra of Tanis. Okay, okay, this is kind of funny. I guess it's a little trick. It means I've played the Candelabra of Tanis and the Soul Ring for free, which which could be relevant because I can sack them to my Orc and I can I can deal some damage that way. I think I should just swing in at least for five. Exactly, attacking for five. Going to put him on seven. And, um, yeah, passing the turn. Perhaps I should have used my Orc here to kill the uh, the Dwarven Warrior because now Yoop can make his uh, often troll unblockable and put me on seven. And then if he has burn, he actually wins the game. So um, I I'm taking a risk here. And uh, he is going to attack here with the often troll. Okay, it looks like he's just going to do an alpha strike here. So remember, all his creatures have a plus one, plus oh bonus. So we've got the Llanowar Elves is a 2-1. The Dwarven Warriors is a 2-1. The Often Troll is a 3-2. So it looks like I'm blocking the Warriors on the Warriors. 
and the Dragon Engine here on the Lanower Elf. And then end of turn, I'm going to deal two points of damage here to Yoop, so he's going to drop to five. And yeah, now he, now he can win. He's got no cards in hand. So this is, I guess, game number one? Yeah, this, yeah, this is game number one, so I'm dealing some points of damage here with my Dragon Engine and my Dragon Whelp. Oh, look at that hand, Rock Hydra. Anyway, we're going to shuffle up again because we're not sideboarding in this matchup. And we're going to catch up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's my opponent on the play here, I guess. And look at that. I've taken a Mulligan. So putting a card on the bottom. So I'm starting with six. There is a Lana Rails again. A good start. Let's see what I can do back. Starting with a Mountain. And a Pass. There is a mountain by Yoop as well attacking here. So putting me on 19. So this is looking... Oh, no, there's a bolt. I want to say it's looking a lot like game one, but it's different. I'm bolting this time. So taking care of the uh, Lanora Elves of my opponent here, playing mountain number two and just passing turn. Hopefully I can find my uh, Mana Flare this game and kind of show you the Candelabra of Tanis Mana Flare combination. And Yoop here playing a forest, tapping three. There's a Dragon Engine. No Mana Flare. I was hoping really for that Mana Flare. Yoop tapping four. There's a Giant Spider again. So the Giant Spider is going to stop the Dragon Engine. It looks like I'm going to attack, so perhaps I've got another Bolt in hand. And Yoop is blocking, and there is the Bolt. So that's taking care of the Spider. Let's see what else I can do. Tapping three. Okay, there is a Wheel of Fortune. That kind of explains why I wanted to empty my hand so quick, quickly. Also, Wheel of... Oh, look at that. Three two-headed giants. Oh, I'm so sorry, Yoop. It's such a cool creature. I mean, when do you ever see like four alpha two-headed giants in the deck? It's super cool. But for me, of course, this um, Wheel of Fortune play was quite good. I started with the card last. Remember, I took the mulligan. So just trying to empty that hand and... Lightning Bolts are ideal for that, of course. Just one red, instant speed, three damage. Goes everywhere, anywhere. It's, it's ideal. But at least Joop can now start with uh, a fresh hand. Going to draw card number eight. So it's not that bad for him. Let's see what he can do. I'm expecting some creatures here. There's an Orcish or a Flame. And a Dwarven Warrior. So that is kind of the combination, right, that uh, Joop wants to play. Playing a mountain on my side, attacking here with the dragon engine. And second main, playing a dragon whelp. And okay, finding a mana vault. We haven't really seen mana vault yet. Mana vault, of course, works quite nice when I want to play out an early Shivan or have one of those X burn spells. There we see. Yoop here tapping four. There is a Dragon Whelp of his own. So we both have a Dragon Whelp. But he can make his unblockable with the Dwarven Warrior. Tapping six. Ooh, tapping nine. We're going to see... Oh, Rock Hydra. That is really sweet. So Rock Hydra comes in as a seven, seven. That is really cool. This, I mean, this is cool, isn't it? These are the creatures you want to cast when you're playing Magic. This is really sweet. I am thinking, looking at it from a critical perspective, perhaps I should have first attacked with the, you know, Dragon Whelp offering my opponent a UP or a trait. And he probably would have just taken the damage, and after that I could have played the Rock Hydra, so... So that's, a li that's, that's a mistake on my part. I feel like I should have done that first because now, of course, you can make his uh, Dragon Whelp unblockable attack and deal some damage. But the problem, of course, that he has is that huge Rock Hydra. How is he going to deal with my 7-7 seven, seven Rock Hydra? It's understandable that he's a little bit in the tank here trying to find a way out of this. Now, remember, he doesn't have access to, like, Terror or Swords to Plowshares. I mean, he just needs to get a lot of mana out and, and, and play a huge burn spell on the Rock Hydra, I guess. The, the positive thing about the Rock Hydra is, though, for each damage the Rock Hydra takes, it loses a counter unless you pay a red. So he can also just p uh, play a Fireball here for four, for example. Oh, Thicket Basilisk! That is such a good answer! Oh, <laughs> well done! Thicket Basilisk is ideal. I'm untapping the Mana Vault here, by the way. 
Oh man, am I really just gonna trade the thicket here for my Rock Hydra? That would be a bad decision. I am playing the Bolt. Am I playing the Bolt perhaps? Oh, Giant Grove! So playing the Bolt on the Dragon Ball, but he's saving it with the Giant Grove. That is pretty sweet. And uh, bad news for me, of course, so I'm just passing to turn three cards in hand though. I mean, this is, this is, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting game. I want to say this is looking bad for me, but it's not necessarily that bad, but it's just an interesting game. I, if I can find like an X burn spell, I can, I can kill the thicket and attack with the Hydra. I think that's kind of the dream right now. And I wonder if Yoop is going to use his uh, Dwarven Warrior. First, he's going to tap four. Okay, there's a Jade Statue. So Jade Statue is just an artifact. And during combat, you can bring it to life and it becomes a 3-6. A He's trying to find a spot on the mat where there's not that much glare. And um, I think I think you found it. But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty sweet what he can do. I'm expecting him... I mean, the question here, is he going to attack or not? That's the big question. I think I think I would. I think I would just attack and... You know, he can make it unblockable with the Warrior. Then again, then I can attack, of course, with the Whelp. Deal quite a lot of damage. It's probably better not to. Yeah, exactly. So he's, he's going to keep it. Look at, look at this. What I'm doing during your upkeep, you can pay three red to grow ahead on the Hydra. So I'm actually growing ahead on the Hydra. So it's becoming bigger. And I, I'm just really waiting for my, for my burn spell to kill the Thicket. It looks like I'm tapping five, though. So perhaps I've got like a, a dis disintegrate. No, I don't. I'm just playing another Dragon Engine. So we're kind of clogging the board with a lot of creatures. If I can find like a Dwarven Warrior of my own, I can start dealing some damage. Because I, th I think if you're Yoop, you don't really want to attack with your Dragon Well, because if you do, then I can hit him back with mine, and I've got a lot of red mana, so I can just b make a huge Dragon Whelp. Deal some damage. There's another Orcish Oriflame, though, so it's getting more and more attractive. Uh, attractive for Yoop here to make his Dragon Whelp unblockable. So now all his creatures get plus two plus O oh when they attack. So it's it's kind of getting out of hand. You can see me going flicking through my cards trying to find a solution. I really want to attack with my Rock Hydra. And you being in the tank, trying to think, what is the best line of player? I'm still on 20, of course. So he is going to make a creature unblockable. He's going to make the whelp unblockable attack. So it's a 4-3. And he can pump it as well. He's got red mana open. So he can, he can exactly, he's going to deal 6 damage. I'm going to drop to 14. Yeah, I think this is a good decision. I can swing back for 5, but he's doing more damage than me. Because of the Aura Flames. So this is tricky. Ooh, paying a lot. There's a huge Disintegrate. Is that going to give me the game? No, I'm going to kill. <laughs> Look at that. I'm just going to kill the Thicket and attack. Because I just want to attack with the Rock Hydra. I'm like, am I really going to burn him out? I'm like, no, I wouldn't do that. But this does surprise me because I could have also attacked now with the other creatures as well. And he's going to animate his Jade Statue. So he's going to block with the Jade Statue. So he's going to lose the Jade Statue. And look at that. I'm going to lose three counters because the uh, Hydra is going to take three points of damage. And I think, I think I just tapped out completely on the Disintegrate just kind of for fun or to make a statement or something. I... I Obviously, that wasn't a good move. A better move would have been to just, you know, pay seven because he could have had a, a giant growth to save it. Um, and then keep some mana open to potentially kind of regenerate those Rock Hydra heads. So I'm on 14. Yoop is still on 19 because he, he did that block with the Jade Statue. Now he kind of has to find a way out of this. So he's making the whelp unblockable again. So he's going to hit me for four. Is he going to pump it up? He's going to pump it up one, two. He's going to deal six damage again. So I'm going to go to eight. I mean, I'm quite low here. 
Gonna play another Dwarven Warrior. He can use that to kind of chump my Hydra. And am I gonna keep my Volt tapped? I should probably untap the Volt here. So I'm gonna stay on eight. I don't wanna go to seven. I am gonna go to seven. This is risky. Do I, does that mean that I've got like a big burn spell? Because now that I'm on seven, he can actually kill me next turn. He can, with the whelp, he can pump the whelp, and he can kill me. So this is a weird decision. There's a bolt on the whelp. Oh, there's a grove. That is really bad. That is really bad news for me. And yeah, I'm now pointing to the vault, realizing I should have untapped the vault. Yeah, this is this is bad magic from my part. I guess it is kind of more fun in a way because it looks like Yoop is going to kill me. We're going to have a 1-1 one, one in game number three. But yeah, this is some sloppy magic. Anyway, attacking with everything I have, just trying to deal as much damage as possible. We're going to see the chump block here on the Hydra. And I'm going to pump it all up. So I'm going to deal five, nine points of damage. He's going to drop to seven. And then he's got, then he's going to kill me. He's got this one. I mean, yeah, this is some sloppy magic from my side of the, of the board. Sloppy game number two, and uh, I'm going to have to pay the ultimate price for my sloppiness. There's even a giant grove. Yeah, you can, get, you can get the burn back, but it doesn't matter. You see me already kind of cleaning up the table like, okay, okay, man, you've won. We know you've won, and <laughs> you know. He can attack because it gets a plus two plus oh from the Aura Flame and he can just uh, pump it up. So it's, it's quite easy for him to just kill me with the Dragon Whelp. So uh, sorry guys, bit of sloppy magic from my part, but that's how it goes sometimes. It does mean it's 1-1. So the cool thing is we're going to have a game number three. Game number three, here we go. So um, yeah, hopefully I can show you some clean magic because that game number two was a little bit embarrassing from my side. At least I can start on the play, starting with the Mana Vault turn one. And my opponent just starting with a mountain. There's another mountain on my side. Maybe if I can get three mountains, perhaps I could play out a Sheevan Dragon in turn three. That would be awesome. Oh, Shatter though on the Mana Vault. Good decision by Yoop, I think. Taking care of that Mana Vault here with the Shatter. There's another mountain from my side. And just a pass though. There's a mountain from Yoop. Also a pass. So we're kind of building up our lands and passing turn. But now I'm missing a land drop. That could be very costly. Yoop here finding his land. Tapping four. There's a giant spider. That is not great for me. Missing a land drop again. Playing an orcish mechanics. So the 1-1 one, one creature we saw earlier in this match. So I can tap it. Sack an artifact. Deal two damage. But I don't have the mana vault anymore. Because that would be a perfect artifact to sack. After I've tapped it of course for mana. Not meant to be, though. There's the attack with the spider and a two-headed giant 4-4 trampler. It's looking quite bad for me. I'm on 18. Next turn, he can swing in for 6, put me on 12. I need to do something. At least finding a land. Come on. Play something. There's a dragon whelp. Okay. Dragon whelp potentially could be a next a good blocker. Not for this turn. At least I can block the giant spider with it. So it's going to stop the bleeding a little bit. There's the attack for 4. So I'm going to drop here to 14. Not blocking, of course, not yet. Next turn, I can keep some mountains untapped. Tapping a green, are we gonna see? Okay, we're gonna see a lot of our elves. In his second main, tapping more even. Keeping a green open, perhaps for a giant growth. Finding a dwarven warriors here. Okay, so we can use the dwarven warriors to make his giant spider unblockable from now on. That is super annoying. And look at this. I'm actually attacking with the whelp. That's going pretty fast. I'm surprised about this attack. I mean, I, I, I guess the way I'm thinking is I don't want to block it on the two-headed giant. Okay, so he's blocking with the spider, pumping the whelp. And yeah, there's a giant. That was I was afraid of because the one green was open. And I think I should have kept the dragon whelp on, on blocking duty to perhaps block the... The two had a giant, then again, Yoop could have played his giant growth with that block and I would have taken some trample damage also. So it's it's kind of a catch-22 
situation for me, but now I'm losing the whelp. And that means I'm going to take a lot of damage here. He's going to attack with the two-headed giants, probably going to attack with the giant spider. So six damage on the table. Ooh, even more. He's going to attack with the Lanarer as well. And I'm actually blocking the two-headed giants. So I'm taking three damage from the giants. So six damage in total. So I'm going to drop to eight from 14 to eight. There is a lightning bolt, though. Killing the two-headed giant. At least that's something. But I'm on eight. I'm quite low. What is he going to do here? Second main. Giant, uh, sorry, uh, uh, regrowth on the two-headed giant. At least he doesn't have mana to play it out. But this is a problem. So next turn, I'm going to see the two-headed giant again. Playing a fireball. Probably going to kill the Lunawar elves and the dwarf. I don't have enough mana to kill the giant spider, unfortunately. And if I did, I probably should have kept the fireball in hand. But Because we're going to see the two-headed giant now again. Finding its way onto the battlefield. Oh, this is going so bad for me. He's going to attack me. Put me on six. I, I, I'm, I think I'm going to lose this one. I mean, I've got two creatures I have to deal with. At least a land and a burn to deal with the, with the giant. At least. I'm on six. Come on. Oh, a whelp. It's something. I mean, it can buy me one more turn, I guess. I can block the spider. Take four. There's the aura flame, though. Oh, this is bad because they're going to get a plus one plus oh bonus. So I guess I have to block the spider, but it's going to kill the well because I guess it's got three toughness. I'm going to go to one. Oh, this is so bad. I think I'm dead. I think I'm dead. There's nothing I can do, right? Okay, tapping four. Another whelp. I guess I'm, I'm, I, I am drawing a lot of dragon whelps, which is, it's usually really, really good in this deck, but he's going to win. There's nothing I can do. Yeah, blocking, but that's it. That's it. Well done, you. Oh, look at my hand. I had Sheevan in hand. Sheevan Dragon. Also a fork and a disintegrate. If I just could have had some more mana, if the mana vault would have stayed there, that shatter was so, so important. But uh, wow, man, Yoop, congratulations. You know, what a great victory. What a beautiful deck you brought to the table, man. I'm really enjoying these uh, these alpha decks and four alpha two-headed giants. It's absolutely gorgeous. And, and combining that with Orcish Aura Flame, Dwarven Warriors, there are just so many cool cards in your deck. It was a joy to play against it. And uh, yeah, thank you for bringing it to the table. And also thank you for watching another video right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you like this video, please take a moment to like and uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. And also leave a comment and share this on your socials. All these things really help uh, supporting the channel and they are all completely for free. So if you do that, uh, you have my eternal gratitude. And there's one more thing you can do uh, for extra gratitude, I guess. And that is becoming a patron via Patreon because I have my own Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. That's probably an info card appearing right now. If you click on an info card, it will take you to the Patreon page of this channel. And there you can find out how you can support the channel financially. It's quite easy. It already starts with just $1 a month. And for that, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can also join in all the Timmy Talks tournaments. Um, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll.